I told you to subscribe. Now look what's happened, huh? Now you're in my cooler. How'd that happen? And I gotta find a place to, I gotta find a place to put you when nobody's looking. So you stay in here, you think about what you didn't do, you didn't subscribe, you didn't click notifications, and this is how you ended up where you are now. Train the muscles, not the joints. Well, welcome back to Natural Line Bodybuilding, and today I'm going to the butcher shop, I'm going to the gym. I'll show you some video footage there. Whatever. Okay, you know what? This this cooler is more noisy than usual. I don't I don't know why. It's like a, it's like it's heavy or something. Like there's something in it. I don't know what there would be in there. I mean, unless of course somebody didn't subscribe. Okay, just one second, one second. I'll have to stop this cooler. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about neck training and should you train neck if you're a bodybuilder, if you're looking to get on stage and all this kind of stuff, do you need to train your neck? And I don't train my neck, but there can be some valid reasons to train neck and I'll talk about them here. Now a lot of times people ask me, Jason, do you train neck? And what do you do for your neck? Your neck is huge, all this kind of stuff and I don't know, maybe I just have a big fucking head. That's probably what it is. It's just my head is like so heavy that every time I tilt to one side or the other, maybe it strains my neck where... Most of you guys out there have normal shaped heads and normal sized heads, so it doesn't really affect you. So you don't, you, maybe you need a neck train. I don't know, maybe that's what it is. It's, uh, you know, you need to grow a bigger head. Get more calcium deposits in the, the cranium or something, or get somebody to hit you over the head over and over again or something like that. And then maybe your cranium gets like a bucket or a helmet. It becomes like a helmet. It's kind of like training the, training the cranium. Why's my cat here? Cat's curious about the video. He wants to know about neck training too because he likes to shake my surprises. One thing I have found is that sometimes people try to micromanage bodybuilding a little bit too much. I'm not saying you can't benefit from doing extra little body part type exercises and really isolating. Like sometimes that can be a fun game to play. But one thing I did notice is that just from doing trap training, just from doing uh, bent over lateral raises the way I do it with external rotation and doing bent over rows and doing shoulder training, I got a lot of trap development and some neck development from that. So that's mostly where I got my neck development from. Now. The thing is, is that for bodybuilding, is it really necessary to train neck specifically? I don't think so. Uh, nobody's ever lost a contest because their neck was too small. They usually lose a contest because some other body part is too small and that, that's really the thing. But if you are a person that has a sport, like say you're in rugby or football or you're a wrestler or doing jujitsu or something like that, there's definitely an argument for you to be training neck. Like all the rotatories, all the, all the muscles in your neck that rotate the neck all the muscles that extend or side muscles like the scalenes and everything there is definitely an argument for that and i would recommend for you to at least be doing like isometrics or movements with tension with your hand up against your head or using a rubber band tied around your head and you hook that up to a squat rack and you do these types of movements and turning and everything i think there is something to that and i think it can help you in your training all right let's 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 go to uh oh man I'm locked i got locked out As you noticed, the cooler I could lift with one hand even though there's something in there. And that's because that something didn't listen to any of the advice on this channel and didn't train enough, so that something is pretty light. Not a lot of muscle mass, I'll tell you that right now. Not a lot of muscle mass. All right, let's go, let's go for a drive. All right, here we are. Let's do it. Now what I'm gonna share with you right now is going to make this video shareable. You're gonna to wanna to share this video with all your friends and with people you know and whatever that are training because this is gonna be a secret tip that not everybody knows and it's something that I may investigate here once I get the piece of equipment I need or something like that, so we'll see. But training the neck 
can have some benefits that are unexpected. And I'm not talking about cosmetic benefits. What I'm talking about is the neck is an integral part of the musculoskeletal system. The neck is integral when it comes down to how the spine functions. So if the neck is out or if the neck is not functioning right, it's a very strong possibility that you'll have some upper back issues or some lower back issues. So working the neck or strengthening the neck may have a positive benefit not only in your pressing or in your shoulder work but maybe in your lower back work or maybe in your squats or your deadlifts or whatever right so it is good to address some of those hidden areas that you haven't trained and that's definitely one area that I have not trained directly and there's a possibility that I could get some benefit from it I will be looking at doing some TheraBand stuff at some point or something. I'll, I'll see if I can design something and see how it feels anyway. So I'm thinking this is a worthwhile experiment for you to do. It might improve your lower back pain. It might actually improve the functionality of your shoulders and your, your shoulder girdle because it may change the positioning of your head and your neck when you're training. So this is something to definitely look at. Of eight chicken breasts and uh, five or six pounds of the red meat. Do you have the red meat, like the grass fed red meat? Get grass fed. Yeah. You gotta get grass fed. You have to get grass fed. Different fat content. You don't die as fast from it. Be quiet in there. Hey, okay? we gotta go to the gym now. Be quiet. So yeah, sometimes there's cosmetic reasons to do things in bodybuilding and sometimes there's therapy reasons to do things. Sometimes you're doing something so that way your body can continue to train. So there are two different types of exercises, the therapeutic ones and the cosmetic ones, the ones that you're using to grow muscle. So yeah, the neck training could not necessarily just be a, a cosmetic one uh, because who cares about a big neck in bodybuilding, but strengthening up that neck or getting a blood flow there may help the shoulder function, may help the back function properly, may help a lot of parts of your body that you're not really sure of why they're kind of getting tweaked. Well, maybe it's something to do with the neck. Maybe the neck's not holding the right position. Maybe the neck is out of place and it's causing a compensation down the line. So yeah, address that. So one thing I will say is that the wrestling type of way of training the neck is quite aggressive. I'm not saying it's it's not not a bad way to train the neck if you're light enough, if your body weight to strength ratio is, is, is pretty good. So say you have a super strong neck and you're kind of a lighter guy, then maybe that would be an exercise you could start with. But for most people, I would say, it's probably too aggressive and you're probably going to injure your neck doing stuff like that. So I would recommend using TheraBands or some type of cable or something like that that's less aggressive. Uh, because if you go too aggressive, you know, the neck is also a sensitive area, so you don't want to be tweaking that. It's, and it's definitely not something I would be doing super heavy weights with as far as doing five rep sets or six rep sets. That's not the way you train the neck. So if you're going to train the neck, I would be doing high rep sets, not, not low rep sets. Uh, for one and second of all not going too aggressive in the range of motion You know because you know We all have seen kung fu movies where guys get their neck broken by Chuck Norris and and whatever we know where they are now So yeah, keep that in mind. Let's, let's show you some training footage. I'll show you some training footage now and uh, Yeah, we'll see we'll see what happens at the gym and then I'll talk to you soon All right Here at the gym, but first I need a bite of a protein bar first before I uh where I move forward at this thing, you know, this thing called a workout. So yeah, I gotta put you down. I just want a bite or something in my mouth, something in my stomach, so because I'm kind of hungry, so I'll eat after the gym. Oh, sorry, sorry, this is just awkward. It's awkward when you're laying down like that. I'm gonna go get something to eat after I work out. Uh, probably some sushi, like rice and tuna or something like that. But yeah, having a couple bites in my stomach so I don't have the stomach going grr, grr, during the workout is good. So.
So I hope this helps you out in your training. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get hold of me, just go to naturalglantbodybuilding.com and thanks to the patient supporters and take care for now. Yeah.